gives me immense joy to see that the 27th edition of the Daily Book Fair is centered on the themes of sustainability in education and mental health. Sustainability is need of the hour, for it's the only shield which will defend and guard our planet from the threats of climate change and global warming. Needless to say, last few months have been very tough for everyone and children, especially when they were unable to go to the school. Somewhere their mental health becomes a take, uh, center stage for parents, teachers and everyone. I would like to thank Federation of Indian Publishers for inviting Terry to be part of Delhi Book Fair, second virtual chapter, hosted by Pragati E. Books and literature must always be celebrated, and I'm delighted to discover that now sustainability is being infused as the core value of ed education by the academic fraternity in India and perhaps all over the globe. We should all remember and remind ourselves that education for sustainable development is one of the pillars of UN Sustainable Development Goals, commonly called SDGs, SDG 4, which aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. And here, we must recognize that lifelong learning is nearly impossible without inculcating the principles of sustainability. While education as a goal is a key enabler for all other SDGs, imbibing the principles of sustainability in our daily lives will help us for a greener, cleaner and brighter future. Education in sustainable development will strengthen the foundation of our youth who shall be our future leaders in, in championing the cause of environmental protection and conservation of natural resources. Education in sustainability will empower learners and aspiring climate readers with knowledge, value, skills and attitude to take on the challenges our world is grasping with today in the form of loss of biodiversity, environmental degradation, climate change, inequality, poverty and so on. To top it all, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has, on, has only added to these issues. Education plays a transformative role among students and learners, enabling them to find or create solutions for overcoming the hurdles of today for a secure tomorrow. As a powerful vehicle, education in green growth equips young minds to make informed decisions and ensure collective and affirmative action to drive our future generation to the road of sustainability. We must care for our planet. It's the only one which we have and we have and that we can only do through responsible actions. And that is why education in sustainability should not be limited to being recognized only as a pedagogical method of knowledge dissemination. Instead, it must instill in us a value system that will shape our ethics and lifestyles in a way that will make us more conscious towards environment instead of neglecting it. As a discipline, environmental sciences pushes our children to engage with their immediate and surrounding environment beyond the scope of textbooks in a multidisciplinary manner. Terry has initiated various projects and which are published in the book form, Energy Wise, Energy Rise and the Green School projects that facilitate students, teachers, schools and the stakeholders involved in their concerted efforts to focus on energy conservation and climate action by developing innovative teaching methods. Though these initiatives, select schools and students have become our ambassadors to generate environmental awareness and work towards a global green commitment. We do hope there will be many more who will be joining this 
and our ambassadors will also spread the message to many more. As an educative approach to enhance youth engagement for climate action, Terry has also uh, invited enthusiastic youth participation from all corners of the country to share climate-related blogs and photographs. This helped in bringing together award-winning and thought-provoking blogs on the issues of climate change and the urgent need of sustainable development in every sphere of life. Reading their ideas and innovative thoughts to address environmental concerns are absolutely motivating and reassuring. Through these programs, Terry aspires to reach out to youngers across India and bringing them to forefront through deliberations and dialogues so as to make sustainability a subject of mainstream. Such initiatives are effective methods that go a long way in influencing decision and consumer behavior to invest in education and outreach, which would in turn empower our youth to significantly contribute to climate action. India's remarkable economic growth in the post-liberalized era might have set records or been beneficial, but we cannot turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to the lurking environmental problems. While stitching the fabric of collective action, we must strive to develop innovative solutions to clean our air, promote water and energy efficiency across sectors, conserve our forest and transition to clean energy. Now, these are the things, they are not just bookish. Every student, perhaps every child is today realizing, listening to the news, what is happening in Uttarakhand? What kind of havoc floods are creating all over the country? And other, uh, what uh, Amazon forest, uh, so which is spread across globe, you look at floods in Germany and so on. So they do realize that there is something happening or climate change is impacting the planet. So they have already realized and therefore what we need to do is we need to tell them that these are due to our actions only and we can reverse it or at least stop it immediately by being more intelligent in use of natural resources. So that is what one is trying to do. The students, the young generation, they should work towards solutions that will reduce generation of waste and promote its reuse and recycling to build a circular economy. In fact, if we look back, and many of you will remember as children what our grandparents used to do, everything was reused. There was no culture of use and throw. Perhaps we need to come back to that or at least it should be recycling because lifestyles have changed. So we cannot say that we'll go back to what the life was 100 years back. But definitely we have to ensure that everything that we use is recycled and it's based on circular economy. We must not forget or ignore the fact that climate change was described as the greatest market failure by a renowned British economist and academician, Sir Nicholas Stern. In this regard, the latest Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, commonly known as IPCC, their sixth assessment report is an eye-opener. The report points out that climate change risks, desertification, land degradation, sustainable land management, food security, the greenhouse gas fluxes in terrestrial ecosystems are warning signs that we must act upon now. We are already late. There is no time for later anymore. The alarming global concerns apart from COVID-19 outbreak have led to unimaginable hardships for humanity. And let me tell you, it's the poor who suffers the most. And in India, if we look at, uh, it is that as a country also, we are going to suffer far more than many other countries. Some of the countries, in fact, will be benefited due to the changing climate. But countries like India 
whether it is in terms of product, food grade productivity or extremes of temperature, floods, droughts, everything is going to be in the negative side. Therefore, while we have to continue with the economic progress, that will only make sense that once we have understood the need for climate sensitivity and that sensitivity can be ensured only through education and consequent actions. Our response to climate change must be effective and sustainable. While the findings of such a report could give us a sense of imminent doom, there are lessons for us to be more environmentally conscious instead of being overwhelmed by these concerns. Whether it is about sustainable groundwater management to tackle water stress and scarcity, approaches to food security and use of land resources or acceleration in climate resilient investments by private sector for a net zero future, all these form an integral part of a larger goals of education in sustainability. In that spirit, I would like to congratulate the organization, organizers of the Delhi Book Fair for giving a platform to all the speakers and participants to think green and act sustainably, sustainably along with the motto of reduce, reuse, recycle, repair. Let us also take a pledge to be resilient, reformative, responsible and self-reliant. Thank you so much.